Hello everyone. In this video, I will mainly demonstrate why R Studio is the preferred environment for R. I will also highlight the differences between the main R software and the R Studio. So, R is the main programming software. R Studio is what we call Integrated Development Environment, IDE for R. R Studio uses the main R as a base and then integrates additional features onto it. And this makes working with R much easier. It has a console for executing codes, an environment window for showing history of the codes which you execute, a script window which serves as an editor for writing and executing codes directly, and a whole lot more. Therefore, R Studio is our main coding environment for R. However, let us demonstrate the differences between the two practically. This is the main R environment. It features a console window where you get to write and execute codes. Whenever you launch R, you will see this information displayed for your reference. When you come beneath this information, you will see a greater than symbol, which is called a prompt sign. And again, say we have a Kesa, which tells you that R is ready to receive any code or command you want to write. Um, the text is too small, so I would like to make it bigger. So I go to the edit menu and then select GUI preferences. And I go to the size drop down and select something like 16, click on OK, and the size becomes much bigger. In this information, you will find the latest version that you are using. And again, you will find some words that come with parentheses. These are called functions in R, and when executed, gives you corresponding output. For example, if you execute a license function, you'll be getting the distribution details for R. If you execute contributors function, you'll be getting more information about all those who contributed to the development of the R software. Citation will also return outputs on how to cite R or R packages in publications. So let us demonstrate one of these functions, the very first one. So I go ahead and type license, open and close parenthesis, and press enter to execute. We get information about the distribution terms of the software. Now there is something that really happens when you are typing a function. For example, if I want to demonstrate for contributors function, I would have to type every single letter manually with no assistance from R whatsoever. Now I press enter to execute and the output is displayed in another window that pops out. Here we get information about all those who contributed to the development of the R software. As I was saying, in the main R, whenever you are typing a function, you receive no assistance from R. That is going to be quite the opposite in R Studio, but we'll demonstrate that very soon. There is something else I wish to show you in the main R software. I would like to assign the value 40 to a variable called x. So I just simply type x equals 40 and press enter to execute. Nothing really happens, right? This value 40 is stored into x, which is now in R's memory. However, we simply cannot see it. If I go to the console and I type x and press enter to execute, we see the 40 that we assigned returned to the console. So how do we see what is stored in R's memory? Before I answer that question, I want to write another code to create a plot. Now, if you are an absolute beginner of R, do not mind the code I am writing. Very soon, you'll be writing much more complex codes than I'm doing. So after writing this code, I press enter to execute and I get the plot window also popped out for us to see what we created. Now it is time to go to R Studio and demonstrate these same activities. This is the R Studio interface. On the left hand side, you find the same information that we saw in the main R software. This window on the left is called the console. And at the top, you can see the console is selected. We do have other two tabs on the immediate right, like terminal, background jobs. These are beyond the scope of this course. Even as a frequent user of R, I hardly ever find myself using these two tabs. And so the main functionality for this window is to write and execute your codes. Therefore, it is called console window or command window. On the right-hand side, 
at the top, we find the environment window. So we see that the environment tab is selected. Now, this is where you get to see every assignment that you have made in R. For example, if I come into the console and I type the same code, x equals 40, and I press enter, something wonderful happens. We see the variable x and the value 40 displayed in the environment window. So any assignment that you make, you'll find the variable and the corresponding value displayed in the environment window. Therefore, this window serves for you to see exactly what is stored in R's memory. On the immediate right of the environment window, we find the history tab. This is where you get to see the history of all the codes that you have executed in R. Now, since I use R quite a lot, you'll see I have written a lot of codes. Very soon, you'll be writing much more codes that I'm doing. We also have the connections and the tutorial tabs. You will hardly be using these ones. And so, and they are basically beyond the scope of this course. So we will just simply stick to the main functionality of this window, which is the environment. In the environment window, at the top, you can also see some icons and buttons. For example, you can click on this drop down to import data set from different file formats. We are not going to demonstrate this now. In subsequent lessons, you will get to understand how to import data sets into R. Beneath the environment window, we have the plot window. We call it the plot window because the plots tab is selected. This is where if you get to create any plot, it gets displayed in R for you to see. For example, if I type the same code, now something very wonderful happens as I type codes in R Studio. For example, as I type plot plot function, I get to see an intelligence which displays a list of all functions that are related to the first four characters of the function. Therefore, you get to receive assistance from R whenever you are writing code. Even after highlighting on a particular function, on the right-hand side, you will see information about what a function does, the arguments that lie therein. But we will learn more about functions later on. So I will go ahead and complete my code and execute, and you will see the plot displayed in this plot window. Now you can go to the edges of the windows and click and drag to resize them as you see fit. In the plot window, you can also find a zoom button. If you click on it, it pops out a plot and you can resize it to your liking. Then you can right click on the plot, you can save it or copy the plot only to be pasted in another tool such as Microsoft Word. Also, if I go ahead and create another plot, like a histogram, then I can also use this button right here to go to the previous plot and this one to go to the next plot. You can also use this export dropdown to save the plot as an image, as a PDF, or copy to the clipboard. For all the windows, you can see a brush icon. These brush icons serve to clear whatever is in the various windows. For example, if I come to the console and I might have typed and executed a lot of code, so, for example, if I go ahead and type license and execute, and I feel like I want to have a blank console so that I can see clearly what is being executed subsequently, I can just go ahead and click on this brush icon and it clears the console. If you hover the mouse on it for long, you will also get the label and the keyboard shortcut. However, clearing the console does not mean you get to clear all the assignments that you have made. If I still type X and execute, I still see the 40 that are assigned to this variable. If I go to the environment window and click on this brush icon, R will ask if I really want to remove all the objects from this environment. If I go ahead and click on yes, then everything that is stored in R's memory at the time is all gone. And so if I go back to the console and I type the same variable X and press enter to execute, it throws an error because you have cleared that object from the memory of R. I can also do the same thing for the plots by clicking on this plot icon and simply clearing all the plots. Now, in the plot window, there are other tabs to the left and right of it. For example, we have the files tab. This is called the working directory of R. Anytime you install a program onto your computer, that program uses memory from a particular location on your computer. 
So for example, when I create a plot and I decide to save it by default, it goes to this very location. We will discuss more about working directories in future videos. We also have the packages tab. Anytime you launch R, R comes with pre-installed packages and these packages allow you to do all the sort of statistical analysis and creation of plots like we just demonstrated earlier. But if I want to go ahead and do more complex modeling related to a particular field or create more complex visualizations using the ggplot2 package, then I would have to install that particular package and that will get displayed right here. More on packages and library will be discussed in future videos. If you also want to receive help on any function you want to use in R, you can also use this help app. And then you can get information like, for example, the title of the function and the description, the usage and explanation of the argument that can be used in there. With time, I will show you how to read R's documentation on functions. There is also another window which you cannot immediately see when you launch the environment. If you want to see that fourth window, you can go ahead to the right hand corner of the console window and then click on this icon and that brings up the script window. This is where you get to type your codes, like for example, x equals 40, and then go to the next line and type plot. And in which case, this serves as an editor for writing a single line of code or multi-line codes and execute each one of them separately or all of them at once. For example, I can go ahead and highlight this line of code and then click on the run button here to execute that code and you'll see that displayed in the environment window. I can also go ahead and highlight everything within the script window and click on run to execute and the output is returned for us to see clearly what happened after execution. You can also place the cursor simply at any location within a line, click on run and it runs the code within that line and moves to the next line. If you want to use a keyboard shortcut to execute a code, it is simply control plus enter on your keyboard and the code is also executed as we can see within the console. That is one way to bring up the script window. Another way to bring up the script window is to go to the top left corner and click on this plus icon, which brings a drop down and select our script. And then you can also get the script window. You can also go to the file menu, select new file, and then select our script and you get the script window. These are the four windows of the R Studio interface, which makes working with R much easier. And that is why R Studio is the more preferred environment for coding in 